Hello, everybody. Welcome to today's Reading Through the Bible in 365. Today we are going to be focusing on Ezekiel chapter 24, 25, and 26, and 1 Peter chapter 2. So we're going to get started in Ezekiel with chapter 24. In the ninth year, in the tenth month, on the tenth day, the word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, record this date, this very date, because the king of Babylon has laid siege to Jerusalem this very day. Tell this rebellious people a parable and say to them, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Put on the cooking pot, put it on and pour water into it. Put into it the pieces of meat, all the choice pieces, the leg and the shoulder. Fill it with the best of these bones. Take the pick of the flock. Pile wood beneath it for the bones. Bring it to a boil and cook the bones in it. For this is what the Sovereign Lord says. Woe to the city of bloodshed, to the pot now encrusted, whose deposit will not go away. Take the meat out piece by piece in whatever order it comes. For the blood she shed is in her midst. She poured it on the bare rock. She did not pour it on the ground where the dust would cover it. To stir up wrath and take revenge, I put her blood on the bare rock so that it would not be covered. Therefore, this is what the Sovereign Lord says. Woe to the city of bloodshed. I too will pile the wood high. So heap on the wood and kindle the fire. Cook the meat well mixing in the spices, and let the bones be charred. Then set the empty pot on the coals till it becomes hot and its copper glows, so that its impurities may be melted and its deposit burned away. It has frustrated all efforts. Its heavy deposit has not been removed, not even by fire. Now your impurity is lewdness, because I tried to cleanse you but you would not be cleansed from your impurity. You will not be clean again until my wrath against you has subsided. I, the Lord, have spoken. The time has come for me to act. I will not hold back. I will not have pity, nor will I relent. You will be judged according to your conduct and your actions, declares the Sovereign Lord. The word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, with one blow I am about to take away from you the delight of your eyes. Yet do not lament or weep or shed any tears. Groan quietly. Do not mourn for the dead. Keep your turban fastened and your sandals on your feet. Do not cover your mustache and beard or eat the customary food of mourners. So I spoke to the people in the morning, and in the evening my wife died. The next morning I did as I had been commanded. Then the people asked me, Won't you tell us what these things have to do with us? Why are you acting like this? So I said to them, The word of the Lord came to me. Say to the people of Israel, This is what the Sovereign Lord says. I am about to desecrate my sanctuary, the stronghold in which you take pride the delight of your eyes, the object of your affection. The sons and daughters you left behind will fall by the sword, and you will do as I have done. You will not cover your mustache and beard or eat the customary food of mourners. You will keep your turbans on your heads and your sandals on your feet. You will not mourn or weep, but will waste away because of your sins and groan among yourselves. Ezekiel will be a sign to you. You will do just as he has done. When this happens, you will know that I am the Sovereign Lord. And you, son of man, on the day I take away their stronghold, their joy and glory, the delight of their eyes, their heart's desire, and their sons and daughters as well. On that day, a fugitive will come to tell you the news. At that time, your mouth will be opened, 
You will speak with him and will no longer be silent. You will be assigned to them. So you will be assigned to them and they will know that I am the Lord. Chapter 25 The word of the Lord came to me, Son of man, set your face against the Ammonites and prophesy against them. Say to them, Hear the word of the Sovereign Lord. This is what the Sovereign Lord says. Because you said, Aha! over my sanctuary when it was desecrated and over the land of Israel when it was laid waste and over the people of Judah when they went into exile. Therefore, I am going to give to you give you to, sorry <laughs> therefore i am going to give you to the people of the east as a possession they will set up their camps and pitch their tents among you they will eat your fruit and drink your milk i will turn rabba into a pasture for camels and ammon into a resting place for sheep then you will know that i am the lord for this is what the Sovereign Lord says, because you have clapped your hands and stamped your feet, rejoicing with all the malice of your heart against the land of Israel. Therefore, I will stretch out my hand against you and give you as plunder to the nations. I will wipe you out from among the nations and exterminate you from the countries. I will destroy you and you will know that I am the Lord. This is what the Sovereign Lord says, because Moab and Seir said, Look, Judah has become like all the other nations. Therefore, I will expose the flank of Moab, beginning at its frontier towns, Beth, Jeshemoth, Baal, Meon, and Kiriathim, Kiri, Kiri, yeah, Kiriathim, the glory of that land. I will give Moab along with the Ammonites to the people of the east as a possession, so that the Ammonites will not be remembered among the nations, and I will inflict punishment on Moab. Then they will know that I am the Lord. This is what the Sovereign Lord says, because Edom took revenge on Judah and became very guilty by doing so. Therefore, this is what the Sovereign Lord says. I will stretch out my hand against Edom and kill both man and beast. I will lay it waste, and from Teman to Dedan they will fall by the sword. I will take vengeance on Edom by the hand of my people Israel, and they will deal with Edom in accordance with my anger and my wrath. They will know my vengeance, declares the Sovereign Lord. This is what the Sovereign Lord says. Because the Philistines acted in vengeance and took revenge with malice in their hearts and with ancient hostility sought to destroy Judah. Therefore, this is what the Sovereign Lord says. I am about to stretch out my hand against the Philistines and I will wipe out the Kerithites and destroy those remaining along the coast. I will carry out great vengeance on, on them and punish them in my wrath. Then they will know that I am the Lord when I take vengeance on them. Chapter 26 In the eleventh month of the twelfth year, on the first day of the month, the word of the Lord came to me, Son of man, because Tyre has said of Jerusalem, Aha! The gate to the nations is broken and its doors have swung open to me. Now that she has, now that she lies in ruins, I will prosper. Therefore, this is what the Sovereign Lord says. I am against you, Tyre, and I will bring many nations against you. Like the sea casting up its waves, they will destroy the walls of Tyre and pull down her towers. I will scrape <clears throat> I will scrape away her rubble and make her a bare rock. Out in the sea she will become a place to spread fish nets, for I have spoken, declares the Sovereign Lord. She will become plunder for the nations, and her settlements on the mainland will be ravaged by the sword. Then they will know that I am the Lord. For this is what the Sovereign Lord says. From the north I am going to bring against Tyre Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, king of kings, with horses and chariots, with horsemen and a great army. 
He will ravage your settlements on the mainland with the sword. He will set up siege works against you, build a ramp up to your walls, and raise his shields against you. He will direct the blows of his battering rams against your walls <coughs> Excuse me, and demolish your towers with his weapons. His horses will be so many that they will cover you with dust. Your walls will tremble at the noise of the war, war horses, wagons, and chariots when he enters your gates as men enter a city whose walls have been broken through. The hooves of his horses will trample all your streets. He will kill your people with the sword, and your strong pillars will fall to the ground. They will plunder your wealth and loot your merchandise. They will break down your walls and demolish your fine houses and throw your stones timber and rubble into the sea. I will put an end to your noisy songs and the music of your harps will be heard no more. I will make you a bare rock and you will become a place to spread fish nets. You will never be rebuilt for I the Lord have spoken, declares the sovereign Lord. This is what the sovereign Lord says to Tyre. Will not the coastlands tremble at the sound of your fall? When the wounded groan and the slaughter takes place in you, then all the princes of the coast will step down from their thrones and lay aside their robes and take off their embroidered garments. Clothed with terror, they will sit on the ground, trembling every moment, appalled at you. Then they will take up a lament concerning you and say to you, <coughs> excuse me, how you are destroyed, city of renown, people by men of the sea. You are a power of the seas, you and your citizens. You put your terror on all who lived there. Now the coastlands tremble on the day of your fall. The islands in the sea are terrified at your collapse. This is what the Sovereign Lord says. When I make you a desolate city, like cities no longer inhabited, and when I bring the ocean depths over you and its vast waters cover you, then I will bring you down with those who go to the pit, to the people of long, <clears throat> long ago. I will make you dwell in the earth below as in ancient, ancient ruins with those who go down to the pit, and you will not return or take your place in the land of the living. I will bring you to a horrible end, and you will be no more. You will be sought but you will never again be found, declares the Sovereign Lord. 1 Peter chapter 2 Therefore, rid yourselves of all malice and all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and slander of every kind. Like newborn babies, crave pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow up in your salvation, now that you have tasted that the Lord is good. As you come to him, the living stone, rejected by humans, but chosen by God and precious to him, you also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For in scripture it says, See, I lay a stone in Zion, a chosen and precious cornerstone, <coughs> Excuse me, and the one who trusts in him will never be put to shame. Now to you who believe, this stone is precious. But to those who do not believe, the stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. And a stone that causes people to stumble and a rock that makes them to fall. Make them fall, not to fall. They stumble because they disobey the message which is also what they were destined for. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Dear friends, I urge you, as foreigners and exiles, to abstain 
from sinful desires which wage war against your soul. Live such good lives among the pagans that, though they accuse you of doing wrong, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day he visits. Submit yourselves for the Lord's sake to every human authority, whether to the emperor as the supreme authority, or to governors who are sent by him to punish those who do wrong and to command those who do right. <coughs> for it is God's will that by doing good, you should silence the ignorant talk of foolish people. Live as free people, but do not use your freedom as a cover-up for evil. Live as God's slaves. Show proper respect to everyone. Love the family of believers. Fear God. Honor the emperor. Slaves, in reverent fear of God, submit yourselves to your masters, not only to those who are good and considerate, but also to those who are harsh. For it is commendable if someone bears up under the pain of unjust suffering because they are conscious, conscious of God. But how is it to your credit if you receive a beating for doing wrong and endure it? But if you suffer for doing good and you endure it, this is commendable before God. To this you were called, because Christ suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his steps. He committed no sin, and no deceit was found in his mouth. When they hurled their insults at him, he did not retaliate. When he suffered, he made no threats. Instead, he entrusted himself to him who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness. By his wounds, you have been healed. For you were like sheep going astray, but now you have returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. Thank you for joining me for today's Reading Through the Bible in 365. I hope you all have a wonderful Monday, and I will see you in the next one, guys. Bye!